welcome, Johnny Beaner. All right, hello everyone. Yeah, like he said, my name's Johnny Beaner. So, obviously that sucked growing up. <laughs> Thank you. That always hurts my feelings. Picture this little Johnny Beaner out at recess, third grade, trying to play kickball. Just trying to fit in, but I'm having a hard time. I got some, you know, bullies circling around me chanting, Johnny Beaner has a tiny wiener. <laughs> this very logical kid, you know, only thing I could think to say back was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm nine. <laughs> Pretty sure we all have tiny wieners. We're third graders. <laughs> You're making fun of me. If you want to make fun of someone, we should be making fun of the kid that's hung like a horse. He's the weirdo. What's he doing with a grown man's penis in third grade, right? He's got nothing to look forward to. Mine's gonna get bigger, I've seen my dad's. Right? I think we all have at some point. Right? You seen your dad's penis? <laughs> yeah. I was just kidding, oh you. We got a weirdo at the end of row one here. Please tell me it wasn't recently. Okay, moving on, all right. <laughs> People usually don't answer that quickly. Uh, anyway, I'm married, I love being married. And I get it, I know a lot of comedians that come on stage, you know, and they, and they make fun of their wives, you know, and I, I will be doing that in just a minute here. <laughs> but I, I wanna start out by, by saying uh, how much I appreciate my, my marriage. And I think the reason I don't take it for granted is because I never, thought that it would happen for me. Uh, well, mainly because my last name is Beaner. I figure who's gonna wanna marry into Beaner, you know? But you know what, 10 years ago, the stars aligned, and I met Aaron Pagina, and we fell in love, we got married. She actually took my last, well, she hyphenated. That's right, you're all saying Pagina Beaner in your heads. That's, that is correct. It's going good, we just celebrated a big milestone anniversary. Yep, the big, uh, the big six or seven. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's good stuff. We were out on, uh, we went out for a date night and we're sitting in this booth facing each other. We're eating our food and there's a group of people in the booth right behind my, my wife and they're talking really loudly. They start making jokes about how if you chew on your ice and your drink, supposedly, that's a sign means you're sexually frustrated, right? If you're chewing on your ice. So she's listening to this conversation. She turns and looks at me, and of course, what am I doing? <laughs> Masturbating. So, <laughs> ah, she lets that ruin the whole night. We're very different though, my wife and I. You know, I grew up in, in a, a normal family, you know? She grew up in uh, like one of those hippy dippy, all natural, like her dad was an actual hippie, like a real hippie from back in the day, and her mom's a holistic nurse. If you don't know what holistic medicine is, I'll tell you, here's how I describe it. It's basically like, remember when you were little and you'd play house, you know, and you pretend you had to go to the doctor, but you know, you're a kid, so you don't have equipment, so you're just kind of using sticks and rocks and shit. Well, that's holistic medicine, okay? <laughs> I never, whenever we go visit her mom, I, know, I always, even if I'm sick, I won't tell her I'm sick, because she's always, you know, oh, you're not feeling, oh, you just gotta lick a frog's asshole and do the hokey pokey. <laughs> oh, no, no thanks. Oh, well, that didn't work? Well, here, put this crystal in your pee hole. All right, you know what, do you have any Tylenol? Just use Tylenol? Here's, here's a better example of how we're different, okay? We, uh, let's see. When I was single, I used to use Irish Spring, okay? It's good soap, right? Gets the job done. And uh, then I met my wife, we got married, we move in together, she sees my soap in the, in the shower, she freaks out, she's like, whoa, whoa what is this? Oh, yeah. You can't use that, that's terrible. That has aluminum in it. Uh, I don't see any. She's like, no, you can't use that here, you gotta use this weird misshapen oatmeal rock I bought from a homeless person at the farmer's market. This is what your body needs. Good stuff. And I don't wanna make waves, you know, so I'll, whatever, I'm using her soap, okay? First of all, it hurts because there's pebbles in it. I don't know who's running quality control at the Hippy Dippy Soap Factory, but I think they're asleep at the wheel because there's a lot of crap going down the belt no one's pulling out. I was using her soap one time, I'm washing my legs, cut my leg. I looked down, there was a stick 
in the soap. Are you kidding me? I never found a stick in my Irish spring, okay? You ever cut yourself soaping? Yeah, it's kind of frustrating. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I used to go to Target, buy a year's supply of Irish spring. It cost me $9. Comes in a box, says soap all over it, right? Meanwhile, my wife's buying soap from gypsies. Made out of oatmeal and sticks. The packaging is rope. The label's just, you know, a piece of scratch paper. Some hippie took a Sharpie and wrote, nature's chunk of shit, $14. What do they say? Happy wife, happy life, right? Yeah, wonder who came up with that. I wish husband rhymed with life. You gotta come up with something for the guys, you know? If you want a happy man, blow him whenever you can. I don't know, I'm just brainstorming here. I don't think that one's gonna stick. Just saying, a lot of those phrases tend to, you know, benefit the women, you know? Like, we always say the other one, uh, pick your battles. We always say that to guys when they're getting married. No one says that to women, you know. Oh, you're getting married, huh? Oh, well, pick your battles. What do we say to women? Oh, you're getting married. You're gonna win. A <laughs> lot. Pick your battles. Me and my wife, we were married two months. Two months, okay? All of a sudden, out of the blue, she just goes, hey, I wanna get a dog, let's get a dog. I was like, no, I don't wanna get a dog, nope. She's like, no, we're getting a dog. You're gonna love it, let's get a dog. I said, no, I don't want a dog. Too much money, too much energy. No, let's not do that. She's like, come on, we're getting a dog. Finally, I said, you know what? I'm gonna use one of my battles here, okay? She goes, what the hell does that mean? What are you talking about? What's a battle? <laughs> right, because no one ever said that to her. So I had to explain. I was like, well, you know, people always say, pick your battles, so I'm using one of mine for this. <laughs> yeah, she started laughing, and then we got a dog. <laughs> Very frustrating. Pick your battle. That makes guys feel like we get a win, you know, when you, that's deceiving. You don't get a win. You just got to pick what you bitch about and then you lose anyway. <laughs> pick your battles. I didn't want a dog. That was my battle. 24 hours later, dog. <laughs> you know? And my wife's such a hippie weirdo. We couldn't go to the store and get some new fun puppy. No. We had to go to the shelter and rescue some old handicapped dog. <laughs> oh my God. We walk into this place. My wife's like, do you guys have any blind dogs? I think the, the lady working the rescue had an orgasm. She's like, oh, yes, yes we do. Come with me, follow me, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> Takes us down the saddest hallway I've ever walked down in my life. They just got Sarah McLaughlin on a loop as you walk down the hall. <laughs> we get to the end of the hall. My wife falls in love with this dog. The, the dog, I think it was like 97 years old. You know, and that's people years, okay? This, this is a 640-year-old dog here. <laughs> Basically, we went into this place and said, ah, oh, yeah, that dog can die in our living room next week. <laughs> that's fine, yeah, we'll take that one, box it up. We'll take that one. <laughs> and we still got the dog. <laughs> yeah, and I knew this would happen. All the work, like all the work falls on me, you know? It's fine, I try to love the dog. Has anyone here, you ever walk a dog whose, whose hind legs are faster than their front legs? <laughs> it's hilarious for like two days. And then it gets old because the dog's constantly trying to pass itself. <laughs> it's got to like recalibrate every two sidewalk squares. Oh my, it's like walking a crawling baby. Come on, come on. <laughs> and I, that was another one of my battles was, okay, fine, I caved, I lost the battle with the dog. Fine, we'll get the dog, whatever. And I said, you, but you know what, here's the rule dog cannot be on the bed. Yeah, lost that battle too. That's like, the dog lives on the bed, okay? That's where, that's like its living space and then its bed is essentially my pillow and it's frustrating because this dog's butthole is, well, let's just say it has an Audi, okay? Yeah. It's kind of, how I don't have pink eye 24 hours a day is beyond me, I have no idea. Whatever, happy, happy wife, happy life. I do love her. <laughs> I'm a dad, I'm a dad. I got a little girl, love her. Yeah, it's, it's great. And you know what, I'm a good dad. I'm a really, oh, and I have a son too. Um, <laughs> two kids, a little boy, a little girl, they're the best. Little girl's five, little boy's three, and uh, they're great. They both look just like my wife. In fact, my wife likes to joke around and say that I'm not the father, and we laugh. <laughs> oh, that's good. That, that's comedy. 
That is comedy, yeah. I can't think of anything funnier than just... <laughs> Woo, just the idea of my wife, you know, having sex with another guy. Went to conception. And then, and then me raising it. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, when, she was, when my wife was pregnant with my daughter, she was, uh, she was terrified of the delivery, you know. She was terrified. But she handled it like a champ. I knew she would. I, I knew she would. I, well, I wasn't worried at all. Because it's true what they say about uh, women, you know. Women have an extremely high tolerance for pain. It's incredible. I think it's, uh, it's kind of weird, considering they have such a low tolerance for mild inconvenience. <laughs> My wife can push a nine pound baby through the inside of her body, but God forbid, Hulu Plus has commercials. <laughs> I don't get that. We had a hard time naming our kids. We kept arguing, she'd say a name, and I'd be like, no, that's kind of stupid. Then I'd say a name, and she'd be like, no, you're kind of stupid. <laughs> so we, what we ended up doing was just taking turns. So she went first, she named my daughter, and she named her Edie. Edie, after, uh, I don't know, her mom or dad or something. And uh, so my daughter's name is Edie Beaner, which, uh, that's, that's, that's fine. I realize it sounds like a Star Wars robot, but uh, BB-8, go play with Edie Beaner. Basically, my daughter's gonna hate us when she gets home, meets her first friend, you know? So I got, anyway, I got to name my son. You know, I got to name my son, I was all excited. I've, I've always been a big fan of Michael Jordan. Huge fan of Michael Jordan. Watched all his games growing up, right? Had the Air Jordan sneakers. In fact, these are the uh, Retro 6 Air Jordans. Thank you. Yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, so anyway, so my son's name is Basketball Shoe. <laughs> and uh, I love him. I love him to pieces. It's great. I love both my kids. You know, I just, I just don't want my kids to... I don't want them to grow up to be dumb people. You know, I know that sounds bad. I don't think it's going to happen. But you know what? There's dumb people out there. You know, someone's making them. Right? <laughs> Nobody's making them on purpose. You know what I mean? I think, it, I think how it works is you, you just like, you just look at your kid one day and you just, ah, shit. <laughs> you got a dumb one. You still love them, you just really got to keep an eye on them, you know? I took an Uber. I, I, I took an Uber to the airport in uh, Los Angeles, and we're getting. The, my driver is getting close to the airport. He, he's looking up at the signs. He turns back to me and he goes, "Hey, so are you arriving or departing?" <laughs> Someone made that guy. You know what I mean? I didn't even know how to respond. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's your What's your question? Uh, am I, yeah, I'm arriving. Yeah, I just got to stop at baggage claim, pick up my bags. I should be right out. Thanks, thanks for coming to get me. Yeah, I took one of those special flights where they fly you directly to your house and then you take an Uber to go get your luggage. Yeah, I think they're still working out the kinks, but thanks for asking. Five stars. Oh, man. Can we all agree that uh, men are hornier than women for the most part? No? All right, well, there's a few exceptions. A couple magical exceptions. But I think it's true, and if you, here's, how, here's why I think it's true. Because like, if you think about ladies, if you were as horny as us, if you wanted to have sex with us as much, as often as we want to have sex with you, we, we wouldn't have buildings or cars or roads. This would just be a big planet of people having sex next to dinosaurs today, okay? I'm just saying, I think it's a good thing that you occasionally have to, you know, wash your hair or whatever your terrible excuses are. Excuses are horrible. They're lazy. They're lazy and they're illogical. Okay, <laughs> and it's insulting. You know, oh, I know I have a headache, or no, my butt stinks. Not tonight. You know, or whatever. You know? All right, first of all, we don't care. We we don't. We never care. We don't. You know, oh, really? Your butt? How about I'm the judge of that? Okay. <laughs> Let's get started, and if it's terrible, I'll tap out. You know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's never. This is one my this is one my wife will use, and I. I don't get it. There's no logic. She'll say, you know what, babe, not tonight. I just, I just don't feel sexy. Uh, who gives a shit? What, what does that have to do? I don't get it, because I think she's sexy, you know? That's, isn't that not all that matters if I think she's sexy? You know, I, I would have more respect for that rejection if she would say, you know what, not, not, not tonight, babe, I just don't 
find you sexy. There you go, that's a logical, all right. She says she doesn't feel sexy. What the hell does that even mean? I'm 37 years old. I've, I've never once in my life felt sexy. You know, I still pull down my pants and let her sit on it because I'm a gentleman and we're a team and we got a job to do, you know? Oh gosh. Women, sometimes you can be hippo... You know what? I shouldn't say that. That's not fair. I'm just going to talk about my wife for a minute here. <laughs> However, if every woman on the planet can relate, I guess that's a coincidence. Um, she can be a little bit of a hypocrite sometimes, because like, if I'm trying to find out if we're going to have sex later that night, she'll get mad at me. You know, If I'm like, hey, maybe later tonight we can cuddle or... You know, whatever. She's like, oh, really? You got you to gotta plan it out? You got to figure it out? You ruin the mood. That's not... No. So she gets mad at me. However, on more than one occasion, we've been laying in bed watching Netflix, and unbeknownst to me, she had sex on the agenda, and I didn't know that, so I'm just watching the show, and all of a sudden she turns to me, and she goes, uh, hey, listen, if you're planning on sticking it in, you got about four minutes before I pass out. <laughs> oh, ooh, are you a poet? And it's foolproof because she knows I can't call her out and be like, what the hell is that? And you're saying, I'm not, because I do want to stick it in, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to say anything. It's not fair. I'll, sh I'll overshare this with you. One thing I really enjoyed is when my wife would uh, surprise me by being naked under the covers when I get into bed. It's great. And that's hilarious, apparently. <laughs> My wife is here, okay. <laughs> no, she's not, or I would not be telling this story. This is a true story. So, so she doesn't do it anymore, obviously, as you can tell by the witch's cackle over there. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out how I can jumpstart this, you know, how, I can, how, how can I get her to, to do it again? So here's what, I, here's what I came up with. I thought, I was like, well, because you can't just ask. Then she'll get mad, that's not sexy. So I thought, well, well I'll do it. Right? And then she'll be like, oh, that's right. He likes that. I got to do that. Yeah. In a perfect world. That, that might be how it works. So here's, here's how it went down. So we're, it's bedtime. Okay. And I get naked, get under the covers. And uh, she goes in the bathroom to get ready for, you know, a couple hours. Ladies, I don't know what the hell takes you so long. What are you doing? You're going to bed. What do you, why? You? Whatever. So I'm, I'm in bed waiting. You know, two days later, she finally comes out. She gets in the bed, her foot like gets under the covers, touches me like right here, so she feels there's no boxers. She freezes, <laughs> grabs the comforter, rips it off the bed, and goes, oh, damn it, I just washed the sheets. <laughs> oh, my God. You're going to get pubes all over the sheets. But... Okay. And we don't talk dirty, because I don't think guys can. I don't know. Maybe that's just, I don't know, maybe that's sexist to say. I just, maybe, maybe I can't do it, because I'm too familiar, me and my wife are too familiar, you know? I don't know, I've thought about this a lot. What, what am I going to say? Ooh. Is that my penis? Yeah, that's my penis. You don't have one of those, do you? No, you better not. Uh-oh, what's that behind my penis? <gasps> Are those my balls? Yeah. Do you like my, what's that? What, what are those dark spots all over my balls? Well, that's actually a skin condition. It's called Angiokeratomas. The doctors aren't sure what caused it, but they assured me it's not a health concern. Yeah. Turns out it's just dilated capillaries. Ooh. Why are you putting your sweatpants back on? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Johnny Beaner.